In the first two parts of this series, we covered how to install some fairly basic mods. And as you can see, I've still got the dynamic HUD installed. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to install mods that require a little extra work. Mods that require you to use something called Red Tools. The mod I'm going to use to show you this process is a mod called Medallion Cooldown Reduced. And it's a mod that changes how long uh, the gap is between medallion uses. So normally when I use my medallion, if I press the button again, I just put my hand to the medallion and nothing happens for 10 seconds, I think it is. Which is really annoying. And it means if you're sort of wandering through the forest trying to, you know, spot harvestables, you kind of have to stop every few meters and then just wait a few seconds. It can be very annoying if, like me, you're trying to get every single harvestable component. So, this mod reduces that. However, it does require the use of a tool, as I've already said, Red Tools. And I go along to the Nexus page for Medallion Cooldown Reduced, and if you look at the description, it even tells you how to install it and leaves a link to the Red Tools. I'm actually going to go there right now. You're going to need this tool, so go along to the main files and download manually. I'm going to download mine to my desktop. And then I'm going to do the same with the medallion cooldown reduced file again. Now, the, 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 the actual file is called player, simply player. I'm going to download manually, same place. The first thing I'm going to do is extract both of these archives to my desktop as well. I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract two, and I'm going to leave the folder name unchanged. This one, the Red Tools mod, is a 7-zip file. You will require a program such as 7-zip or WinRAR. I will try to remember to put links down below if you do not have either of those programs installed. So I'm going to extract it here. And then I'm going to do the same with the player 722-1-zip file as well. There you go. Now I can actually completely delete those, don't really need them anymore. I now have my red tools and I have the mods file. First of all, I'm going to open player 7221 and have a look inside there. As you can see, there is a single file. This is the file that is going to mod our game. However, if I look inside my Witcher 2 game folder, which I can find under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, the Witcher 2, and I look under Cooked PC. This is where all the files you end up modding go, replacing the vanilla files. I will not find a player.ws file. In fact, this file exists inside the base scripts.dzip. We have to sort of get that into there to mod our game. And this is where our problem starts. Well, that is the entire problem, actually. How the hell do you get this file inside there? And that is where our Red Tools uh, mod or tool comes in. I'm going to go into the Red Tools folder and Gibd, Gibd's Red Tools. And you can see a few files. Now, there are a few ways of doing this. What we're actually going to be doing first of all is extracting out, expanding the base script .dzip file. Now, there are a few ways of doing this. If you're using a mod manager, which I would suggest doing, I normally would copy this file out probably into this folder and do all the work here so I don't change anything here. But in, in actual fact, you can do it all from here. So, for, for example, if I left click on base scripts.dzip and hold the left mouse button, drag the file across, oh, sorry, drag the file across to gibbedredunpacked.exe, not to the folder, 
to this executable and release it there and then click run. It will do its thing and you'll see a base script folder appear in the cooked PC folder. I generally don't like doing that. Um, so I'm going to delete that now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, copy, and then paste it into here. And the reason for this is then all of the work will be done inside here. Nothing touches my cooked PC folder other than my mod manager. It just makes it a little safer. I don't have to think about what's in here. Um, less chance of making a mistake. How you do it is completely up to you, but the basic principle, whether you do it here or in here, is the same. I'm then going to drag basescripts.dzip into the unpack.exe, and this time the folder will appear here, base scripts. I'm now going to delete that. I don't need it. Once more, I'm going to go back to the player file. And now, if I, if I go into my base scripts, and I believe it's under game, player, there you go. Under base scripts, game, player, I will find the player.ws file. Simply right click once more, copy, right click here, paste, and copy and replace. I have now replaced the vanilla player.ws file with the modded one. I can actually close that now. I'm going to go back up the tree, back to Gibbs Red Tools, and I am now going to drag, right, uh, left click, hold, and drag this entire folder to the gibbed.red.pack.exe and release. Again, let it do its thing. And this time, it will rebuild the base scripts dot dzip. Now, you could just drag this over here and overwrite it and the mod would be installed. Uh, however, I generally use a mod manager. If you're going to do it this way, remember to back this file up. Back it up somewhere, store it as vanilla. I don't need to do that because, of course, I'm using a mod manager. So what I'm going to do is, oh, you can now delete base scripts. You don't need that. And I'm going to... I'm going to cut that and place it on my desktop. And then I can actually close Red Tools. I now have the base script that is essentially my new mod. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add to archive. I'm not going to add it to base scripts. I'm going to name this myself because, of course, I need to give this a reasonable name, something along the lines of medallion. Am I spelling that correctly? Probably not. Cool down, reduced. I've now made a RAR file with that. I can actually delete that now, actually. I've now made a RAR file with the base script inside of it. All I need to do now is open up my Nexus Mod Manager. Click on Add Mod from File. Select the new Medallion Cool Down Reduced RAR file that I created and activate. You see it's overwriting the base scripts.dzip. If you're wondering about this, see the first video where I covered what is going on here. I'm going to yes to all. And the mod is now installed. And once again, if I use the medallion and then use the medallion again and keep using it, which is a vast improvement for me. To me, this is something that doesn't actually make you more powerful. It just means you don't have to spend as much time stopping and waiting. You can just sort of run through it and keep using it. And spot the stuff you need to harvest. Yeah, I really do like this mod. Some of you may have realized there could be a problem with this in that many of these mods are going to be adding files to the same dzip in this particular case, the base script. And that is true. If you get two mods that add different files to the same dzip archive, if I go back to um, common, the Witcher 2, 
cooked PC. Let's just say there are two or three of your mods that all add files to basescripts.dzip. You can do the same process as long as all three mods add three different files. You can add them into a new basescript.dzip. And of course, that one new file, that one new mod will contain actually those three. If the, if the mod you have got contains just one file, then the entire mod is in there. If the mod has hundreds of files and one of them happens to be a base script.dzip file, then some of the mod is going to be in there. As you can see, the more mods you install, the more complicated it gets. And unfortunately, because of the way they've structured the files and because we don't have a tool that currently does this all automatically, I'm afraid when using red tools, you are going to have to either get very creative whilst installing your mods or avoid mods that replace the same dzip files. I'm, I'm not saying it's not possible because it is very possible, but you are going to have to pay attention to what you're doing and probably give some very good names to the files you're creating. It is a shame that uh, no such tool exists to do this automatically because in theory it could be done. Unfortunately, I don't think the Witcher 2 mod scene is active enough for such a tool to appear or for Nexus Mod Manager to incorporate support, which is unfortunate and I'm afraid we're just going to have to live with it. Okay guys, that is the end of this video and it's actually the end of the planned videos the, the videos I planned to make in this series. These were the three videos that I had in mind because in fact, I've not really modded my Witcher 2 game very far. I'm actually enjoying the vanilla game. If you have any questions about other mods that you would like me to look into, other problems, I will have a look at them and if I can figure them out, I may make further videos in this series. So, if that happens, I look forward to seeing you on those videos or any of my other videos if you care to join me there. And until then, remember, as always, have fun.